In the early days, the moiety, seeking an escape from Riven, briefly, briefly pursued the idea of reopening the fissure. They discovered a small mechanical stop to prevent the scope from hitting the portal window. Ultimately, however, they decided against it. I hate to think what would have happened to them if they had not left it alone. I have instructed them to stay away from it. I am almost certain that, with the decayed state of the islands, opening the fissure would n now would be disastrous. Gin mentioned this, the vacuum of the fissure, in his journal on the Boiler Island. Although I'm getting a bad vibe from this. Something tells me that reopening the star fissure may be the fundamental change we need in order to signal Atreus through the gateway image of the Riven descriptive book. That's not going to give us enough time. We need a way to... We need a way to free the people of Riven before we signal Atreus. I've heard that in the days immediately following Gen's confinement on Riven, he attempted to determine the feasibility of navigating the stars beneath the fissure, for he had seen the mist book fall from Atreus's hands into that very same space. To this end, he would have people, alleged transgressors of the law, thrown into it so that he could observe their fate. The telescope which still stands there is is one he had built for these callous experiments. It is said that they did not die, but what became of them remains a mystery. It appears that the limits of Gen's optics preventing him prevented him from learning this fate. The star field beneath the fissure is not as it seems. It is a gentle space, as hospitable to life as a flowing river. This is how Atreus explained it after he had fallen into it. But much more than that we have never under understood, and we were never able to conclude upon its origins. But the visions tell me that it was born out of the, the will of the Maker, perhaps for some greater purpose that we cannot yet understand. Now, the Maker is, well, in the Dunny civilization, the Maker, the concept of the Maker is that the Dunny, they write the links to other worlds, to various ages. The Maker is the one that actually creates them. Gen ultimately believes himself and the Dunny society at large to be the real Makers, which is a poetic notion, but ultimately untrue. I still remember Atreus's words from his journal. I realized, the moment I fell into the fissure, that the book would not be destroyed as I had planned. It continued falling into that starry expanse. It trails off here, but it did. But I remember it all too well. It continued falling into that starry expanse of which I had only but a fleeting glimpse. I don't think, you know, that last part may not have been quite right, but it's pretty much on the mark. These are the words of Atreus from when he fell into the fissure. At the beginning of Mist Masterpiece Edition. So that was that confrontation. That was the moment between the final confrontation between Atreus and Gen on Riven, where they had trapped him. Forever, or so they thought. There must be some greater reason behind it. I neglected to mention it earlier. 
the unique shape of one of the great daggers which appeared during our escape from Riven, the very dagger that stands vertically at one end of the Alatuan, has been adopted by the moiety as a symbol of their cause. It is a sacred symbol for them. It is the representation of all their doctrine and all their representation of me. To deface this symbol is sacrilege. They, haven't, they have their own mythical explanation regarding its hidden origins. I haven't told them that I, was, that I wrote it into the sage, along with, along with the other daggers. So Catherine was the, is the reason behind the existence of the giant daggers in Riven. Things are starting to fall a little bit into place here. It's strange how such a young religion can be so unbending, even to their own god. I've tried to dissuade them of the notion that symbols contain so much power. The enemy uses this can't make out that word against them. They are fearful of Gen's symbol and are terrorized by a symbolic use of the Warwick. I'm guessing that the Warwick is the giant fish with tusks that we've been seeing quite a lot. But they don't want to hear this from me. Perhaps my attempts have even caused some of the younger members of the moiety to doubt that I am Catherine. My name in my rare encounters with those who say they follow Gen have been discouraging. Dis yeah, discouraging. I have hoped to, to have some communication with the surface villagers, but they always flee from me. But I have heard news of some of the villagers' beliefs regarding Gen. Soon after we trapped Gen on Riven, he claimed that he was responsible for the daggers, placing them around the island as a reminder of their failure. In the village circles, it is told that this was a punishment. This was a... Punitive act by, performed by Gen to mark the beginning of a period of restitution. At the end of which, if they have proven them, their devotion to him, they will be delivered unto a new and better experience. I will continue to try and re reach them. The door is open and Gen is free. Gen has the ability to create working books. In fact, he has written one age before I arrived. But he has kept this accomplishment so well hidden that only his closest ministers were aware until now. I'm not sure. Perhaps he has written others. Other news. A few years ago, before the Moite were forced into hiding, Mother managed to steal what appeared to be a test book that Gen had intended to destroy. It had been partially written, but did not work. They didn't tell me about it until now because they thought it was useless. Back then, none of Gen's books worked, but instead of correcting the problem at its source, he blamed it on the impure wood of the Riven Forest and proceeded to engineer a cumbersome mechanical remedy, a complex series of domes to heal his book's inherent flaws. One of the consequences of this crude solution, however, was that the domes demanded huge amounts of energy, and the related problems delayed his success for 
for quite some time. At last, however, he finished his work and is finally able to link to an age, but he has kept this his, uh, <clears throat> his success extremely well hidden. However, for some reason or another, belligerent pride, he has made modifications to the domes which make it obvious that he is using the domes to breathe life into his half-dead books. Perhaps he means to lure us into using the books in the domes. He can't believe that we would blindly swallow the suicidal bait. But he wouldn't know that we have one of his books, the stolen burnt books. It says there is a possibility of, but it's crossed out. Have read burnt book. Age it describes would be unsuitable as a new home for the moiety, must be modified. I will dream. Have requested a group to solve combination that will open the domes. Once open, we can power the burnt book. I do not think Gen will interfere. He will leave the bait. It appears that Catherine is the one that that wrote The Age of the Moiety into, be, into being, or at, at the very least shaped it into what it is now, as we have drawings of, of the dome that we are now in at the moment. Have begun writing the Moiety's Age, now must acquire a second book from again. There is tension, a strain blurs my vision, and nightmares. Neela and Gati stay close. Which, this actually makes perfect sense, because if, you know, one book isn't enough, you know, they still need to be able to get back to Riven, which is fairly important. And there's, appears to be a characterization of the, of the Starfisher, or Gin's exaggeration of it. Much has happened. Almost everything is prepared. We have stolen another book, but I am concerned. Gen will miss it. We have also discovered the combination for entering the domes, but we have not discovered the method for powering them. Um, well, considering the fact that the combination is useless as long as... Um, as long as there are at least two individuals, one to open the dome from the outside via the viewing port, and one to actually interact with the book. However, actually getting the books working via the Golden Dome, I can, I can fully sympathize, because I've said it many times, and I will say it again. When Riven, when Riven collapses, that Golden Dome... I will not miss it. I will not miss that Golden Dome puzzle in the slightest. By powering our burnt book with Gen's domes, we will be able to link to this age, but we will only have access to the domes for a short time before we are discovered. Therefore, we can only use the domes once. I must find another way of making the books work. The gateway image in Gen's books and our own book books all seem to share the same sickness. If they are not powered, the images are blank. It might be possible to clear the vision with only... It appears to be a depiction of, of one of the linking books, and in particular the gateway image. We'll write substance into the moiety age. All is ready. Now all we can do is wait for word from the from the Moyetan Gisk, who is on the lookout for Gin 
to power and use the domes. When he does that, we will have access to one of Gin's domes just long enough. After linking to the age which I have written, I have only I have only to locate the book window substance and refine or adapt it. Laying this window over the gateway image show, should heal the books and make them work. This will allow me to use the second stolen book and return to Riven with more of the book windows. We will then no longer have to rely on Gin's clumsy domes. I laugh at these plans. I sound like Atreus. I am risking my life, but I feel no fear, only in anxiety. Perhaps it is the source of my nightmares. The fissure, like a great wound, is opened. It stains the riven soil with blood. I hold the moiety knife. The voices grow so bad. For their part, the Moite have complete faith that I will accomplish my task, and will lead them to a better world. It is the fulfillment of their prophecy, but they are fearful and tense. I don't know what they will think or do if I fail. It is done. It seems too good to be true. I feel like it's all still a dream. We have already evacuated all of the moiety to this new age. It is beautiful, and I am pleased. At last my people will live in safety and comfort. They will stand under the bare sky, unafraid, and dazzled by their freedom. They are happy. They have named it Tay. There is still not much to be done. We are not protected yet. The only way to completely safeguard this place is to destroy the book that links to here from Riven. But I do not even know how to bring this up. How to bring this up to the moiety. They will be extremely reluctant about destroying their only link to Riven. I share this hesitation. I will be cutting off my only connection. But for their sake, it must be done. I am anxious to know if our activities have aroused Gin's suspicions. If so, we must act quickly. Even so, I feel now that we are impregnable. Tomorrow, I will return to, to Riven to see Gin's reaction for myself. But tonight, I finally rest. And that is the the end of Catherine's journal. So this age, this formerly failed age of Gens, has now been changed by Catherine and the Moite into a sanctuary, which the Moite have chosen to refer to as Te. And this could be the solution to our dilemma. Once we rescue Catherine, we might be able to work together in order to bring the Rivenese from Riven over to Tay. And then all we have to do is make sure that we are there when Atreus arrives. It's a ridiculous plan, but it just might work. After all, the logistics of having Atreus send me to Riven to rescue Catherine and trap Gen in the first place was pretty far-fetched. But things seem to be going smoothly. So, when we return, we shall try and see what else is happening here in Tay, and see if we might be able to find a way back to Riven. Until next we meet.